Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for logging on to www.arabnews.com. Starting this week, we will be introducing our columnists and panelists who are helping report the changes that are taking place in Saudi Arabia as we speak. We have today one of the finest columnists at Arab News, Sabriya Johar with us today. We will speak to her about the events that are shaping the Saudi Arabia of today. Hello, Sabriya. Hello, Siraj. Happy to be with you today. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, having you on the program today. Uh, thank you very much. Sabriya, uh, you are uh, working, uh, teaching at the nursing college in Jeddah. Can you tell us about uh, your uh, background? You were a journalist before. You've been in the field for a long time, and I've been reading your column for almost a decade now. Yeah, in fact, I started journalism in 2003, and it happened all, you know, by chance. In fact, I've been always um, in the academia because when I started journalism, I got my master's degree from Omar Kora University in linguistics. So it was there in the lab. Yeah, in Makkah. Yeah. And then I started journalism, and I loved it, and I found my passion there. And I started working on myself by having, you know, more workshops and, uh, you know, short crashes, uh, courses in journalism, online courses, uh, just to develop my skill in journalism. Sabriya, at a time when you were breaking new ground in journalism, there were very few women or maybe a handful of them. How challenging was it for you to break uh, or, or create a space for yourself in this very challenging field? Yes, in fact, it was very challenging and there were a lot of difficulties, especially that at that time, most of the female journalists were writing only about family and, you know, women affairs, but in, in a, a kind of soft way, like, you know, how to become a better wife, how to take care of your house and things like that. So to deal with hard news was very challenging, uh, but with, um, you know, strong will and passion that I've always had for journalism, I could make it. And of course, the support of my teachers, you know, whether inside the newsroom or the editor-in-chief at the time, and the family, of course. So this is how I made it. Sabriya, you talked about uh, graduating from Omal Qura University in Mecca, and then you went to London and you did your doctoral thesis uh, in uh, education, I believe. Uh, you have a better perspective about both worlds, uh, Saudi Arabia and the Western world. How do people in the Western world perceive Saudi Arabia and has the perception changed over the years? Well, uh, it's really hard. You know, all what I can talk about is basically, you know, my own experience there. Um, for Saudis in general, it's, it's, it's been very hard, especially it's even before the 11th of September, but it got even, you know, harder after the 11th of September. Uh, the name Saudi Arabia has been connected to all, you know, terrorist acts and Osama bin Laden, though he left Saudi Arabia 20 years before the 11th of September. And then, you know, they connected terrorism to Islam and Saudi Arabia as, you know, the land of the two holy mosques has been also connected to terrorism and to uh, extremist Islamists, you know, as they say in the West. Uh, all of that together made it more difficult even for us as Muslims and as Saudi students in the West. Uh, for a female, even it's more difficult because we, we symbolize Islam by wearing the hijab. So it's very easy to spot us out when we're walking in the streets, in the university. So at the beginning, it's usually hard to break the ice with people there in the West. Uh, sometimes they even try to avoid us or avoid talking to us. Sometimes they are tough to us. Sometimes we, we get harassed. I'm one of those people who were harassed, you know, uh, for wearing the hijab there. But uh, after a while, we got used to it. We realized how to deal with those extremists, how to over avoid dangerous places, and also to represent the real, you know, face of Saudi Arabia and of Islam also. That's an interesting perspective, Sabria. But, you know, when people come to Saudi Arabia from the Western world, I'm talking about journalists who come here, and they find it very difficult to get a point of view from Saudis. My question is, who speaks for Saudis? Are the expats who are here who are speaking for Saudi Arabia? Why do Saudis themselves uh, do not come out into the open, speak to these journalists, explain their point of view? 
Uh, is uh, something lacking on that front? Yeah, I guess unfortunately we as Saudis are not doing enough to represent Saudi Arabia in the best way, you know, or portray the best picture for the country, for those who come here or even when we go there. We do our best and there are a lot of people over there who are doing their best, you know, even by being themselves, by being the nice, you know, Saudis that we have always known. But unfortunately, the media is not helping, especially in the West, because they, are, they have this stereotype and this is perspective, you know, about Saudi Arabia that's sort of biased. I don't know whether this is a kind of sens- sensation or they want to sell more. It's just they emphasize this negative stereotype and this ne- negative perception about Saudi Arabia. So even when they come here, and which is supposed to be the best opportunity for them to get to know the country and to get to know the people, uh, unfortunately, they come with a specific agenda they do their homework in a lousy way because they read, you know, what was written before. The oil-rich Saudi Arabia, where women cannot drive, where women are covered from head to toes. And also we don't do our role here because, unfortunately, the Ministry of Information, they take them to specific places like, you know, big malls in Riyadh, big hotels in Riyadh. That's not all about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has different, you know, faces and perspectives that they should know about. So if they let them free, you know, to get to know the people, to mingle among people, this is one aspect. The other aspect, I guess, it's about the language barrier. Not a lot of Saudis, you know, speak English fluently, especially when we're talking about, you know, Saudis in, you know, villages or, you know, uneducated ones. But, of course, the educated ones, they, they can do that. And we have a lot of faces that speak out for Saudi Arabia. Uh- Again, a very interesting point of view. You said that not a lot of people are comfortable in English. Uh, But that is just one segment of the population. Uh, For example, when uh, when Western journalists come in, they talk about women driving. Now, women driving does not affect almost every single Saudi woman. You have mentioned in your columns uh, that there is a vast, silent majority uh, that have more pressing problems than women driving. And it's the same majority that we're talking about is the same majority that uh, I wish the Western media talked to. But unfortunately, again, the language barrier, access to those people, how to access them. There isn't a lot of places where you can see the Saudi women in their reality, you know, in their day-to-day, you know, life. Where You cannot see Saudi women, for example. Maybe these days you can see them when you go to the mall, you can see, you know, as clerks, you can see them, you know, sell women and things like that. But before it was very difficult. For a Western journalist, especially um, a male Western journalist, he can, uh, cannot go into a Saudi school, for example, girls' school. It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. Even for a female journalist, they're not allowed into Saudi school. Even if they're allowed, they cannot go- get inside with the camera. Mm-hmm. So it's th- this privacy about the Saudi society that makes it difficult to get to know it. And we're not making it easy for Westerners. It's not that, you know, it's all our fault, but, you know, it's both sides' fault. Sabria, one of the things that uh, uh, that foreign journalists complain generally is uh, that they want to talk to Saudis, uh, but it is that there is no uh, a positive response from Saudis themselves. Now, when we talk to Saudis, they say there is uh, that lack of trust. Uh, there is this fear that they may be quoted out of context, and it has happened on many occasions. We have had reports where uh, a certain Saudi has uh, has spoken to a Western media outlet and what actually appeared in the newspaper was contrary to what he was trying to convey. So uh, so instead of helping the people in coming out and telling their story, uh, there is a barrier uh, and there is a lack of trust. How can we overcome this barrier? Yeah, that's true. It's an issue of trust. Uh, so unless, you know, that journalist or that uh, newspaper is well known for its, you know, um, for its, for its, you know, credibility. It's very difficult, really, to talk to them. I get endless emails, like every day, from you know, Western uh, newspapers or j- uh, journalists or even bloggers online. But really, I cannot talk to anybody for one reason, unless I screen their background and I see, you know, uh, to which side they belong. Some of them, they are extremists, exactly like the extremists that we see here. They take things out of context and they made, they make up a whole story that has nothing to do with that, whatever we said. They cut the interview. Of course, we all know that interview should be edited. 
in a way, but you cannot edit it in a way that makes it completely different from, you know, what it's supposed to be about. And I've been, you know, through a lot of experiences, you know, where my words were taken out of context. So that's why we have to be careful. Uh, if we were maybe in a society that has more freedom than we do now, it would have been okay, you know. You can try this and that, and then by the end of the day, people who care will come to you and get to know the truth from you. But unfortunately, you get, you know, uh, held accountable by the authority sometimes. If you speak about something that you shouldn't be speaking about, you get held accountable uh, by the people. If you talk about certain issues, they will, ca you know, categorize you as liberal, which is which has a sort of negative connotation here. Sometimes they categorize you as conservative. So there is always a category where they put you and it's, it's very difficult. So you have to think twice before you talk to the media, especially Western media. Uh, uh, one of the things, since you've been a journalist for a long time, one of the things that people keep asking from the Western world is, uh, if some news breaks here, there is nobody to help them contextualize it. If there is something that has happened in a Riyadh prison, for instance, there is nobody from the government side to help them put the story in a perspective. You think uh, it will be uh, uh, proper to say that there should be more uh, word from the government spokesperson? Do those people exist and do they speak to the people? Well, at the beginning, there weren't. And when I started journalism, it was really hard to get news, especially, you know, to get a feedback from or a comment from government, you know. Uh, but after that, uh, things, you know, have changed. Now there is a spokesman for every almost organization, for the municipality, for, for the Ministry of Interior, which is one of the most important ministries that deals with almost, you know, every single aspect of our daily lives. Um, General Mansoura Turkey is one of the best people I've dealt with. Yeah, interior, the spokesman of the Ministry of Interior. He's a well-educated person, he speaks both languages, and he's always available, even if he doesn't pick up his phone the first time, he will call you back immediately. But we still need more transparency, you know. The problem is sometimes not with getting or uh, reaching them, it's about the, feed, the kind of feedback they give to you. There is a sort of, of hesitant, you know, in the kind of feedback they give, and most of the time they didn't give you you know, they, they don't help you to understand. Their answers are vague and they're not straightforward. And most of the time, the only answer you get, we are investigating. Okay, that's fine, you are investigating, but for how long? You have to get back to people and tell them what's going on. Uh, Sabria, you know, there is a new element in this newsroom now called the social media. It has changed the dynamics about how we report news and all. Uh, you have Twitter, you have Facebook. Uh, how do you see uh, the challenges? Uh, you think journalists are still required to screen uh, stuff out, which is nonsensical? Like, for instance, the Emirati guy, uh, it was big news, and later it turned out to be all fake and all. Well, uh, that brings us back to the same point, transparency and more freedom, because uh, people now have access to news everywhere. It's not like before where they read it the next day in the newspaper. So it's challenging for the newspaper and challenging for also truth seekers. Because if you depend only on social media for news, I, again, the same story you cited, you know, it ends up being fake story. So it's always good to hold a kind of balance, you know, between this and that. If the newspapers or the typical newspapers, the printed papers can use both, that would be great. But censorship is not something I'll call for, whatever you know the reasons are. No reason to censorship anything, as long as you are uh, adhered to the basics of uh, journalism, the ethics of journalism, as long as you are holding the balance, as long as you're giving voice to the voices, as long as you are minimizing the damage, then why to censor the news? So maybe, the newspaper, maybe the Ministry of Information should review the regulations about what is allowed and what is not allowed. If you want to minimize the damage that social media sometimes cause to the country, to the individual, to everybody. Sabri, a lot of people out there uh, are watching you and listening to you and all. Uh, is there any specific message to people who are visiting ArabNews.com at this moment as we speak? Um, the most important thing is uh, always seek the truth and uh, don't get uh, take things for granted, especially online. 
not everything that is mentioned online is um, true. Sometimes people uh, publish things because they have specific agenda. Use your brain, you know, read more, seek the truth, talk to those who are concerned about those issues. Like, if you are, if you are concerned about Saudi women's rights or Saudi women's lives or anything, talk to Saudi women. Don't talk to those who think that they are they can represent Saudi women. Nobody can represent the Saudi women other than the Saudi women. That's main, the main thing. Not everything out there is credible. It's very important for you to log on to arabnews.com to get credible reports. Thank you, Sabria, for being on our program. Thank you very much.